to shuffle. So please welcome the Lapkins. since the Olympics just went by, the ultra marathon, this one in particular, could never have been an Olympic sport. It's a seven and a half day marathon, so it would have lasted longer than half the Olympics combined. If it started at the base of Big Ben, you would have to run to the Eiffel Tower, the one in France, and then turn around and run back to the Big Ben, and then keep going, all the way to Stonehenge, where you would cross the finish line. At that point, Bob Costas would probably have passed out from a lack of sleep because it's a long way, right? It's done in Australia, in the outback. So if you can imagine the heat, it's basically a lot of people running forever in hell. Okay? It's the worst imaginable race you could ever think of. So as you imagine the type of people that would be running this ultra marathon, I hope you're thinking of 20 and 30 year olds in the, their youth, in the prime of their athletic ability. They're showing up wearing Nike, Reebok, Adidas. They've got corporate sponsors and elite trainers. These are the guys that are going to run this race. And then there was a guy named Cliff Young. Cliff Young was a toothless potato farmer from Australia. And he was 61 years old. Cliff Young showed up wearing overalls, a baseball hat, and construction boots. And he wore galoshes because he thought it might rain. So the media, they see Mr. Young and they say, Cliff, what are you doing here? Have you ever run a race before? Nope. Have you ever seen a race before? Nope. Have you ever trained? Nope. Then what makes you think that you could complete an ultramarathon? Well, you see, when I was a kid, I lived on a farm, and we'd have to herd up all the different animals, and we didn't have a tractor because we were too poor. So I'd run over here, and I'd gather up all the ducks, and then I'd run over here, and I'd gather up all the cows. But from here to here, it's like a 1,000 acres because they had a big farm and no tractor. So he says, I, I figure it's pretty much the same thing. You just run in a straight line in a race instead of zigging and zagging. And I had to run for a long time, so it's about the same. Now, on your agenda, you have a quote from Mark Twain. The way that I imagined Cliff Young is a 61-year-old Huckleberry Finn. Corn cob pipe, no shoes, overalls, right? That's what I'm imagining, and you would be right. That's what he looked like. So as the race began, all the other racers, they're gone. Wouldn't even look. And then there's Cliff Young. And Cliff Young ran like this. <laughs> you laugh, but that's how he ran. People said he shuffled, because this is how he ran. And it eventually became known as the Cliff Young Shuffle. But Cliff Young had one thing going for him. Kind of goes along with the line that ignorance is bliss. 
Cliff Young had never seen a race, never run a race. So after the end of 17 hours when all the other racers pitched their tent and went to sleep, Cliff Young kept running. He didn't know that you were supposed to stop. <laughs> so he kept running. It was nighttime. He didn't see the tent. I don't know. There are video of Cliff Young running while eating a television dinner while he shot. <laughs> eating his television dinner. There is video of Cliff Young chugging milk while he's running. Those of you who have seen the movie Anchorman, Will Ferrell will tell you if you've been running, milk is a bad idea. <laughs> but that's what he did. When all was said and done, Cliff Young ran for five days, 15 hours, and four minutes straight. The next nearest competitor when he crossed the finish line winning was over 100 miles behind him. The Sydney to Melbourne race is supposed to be a seven and a half day race. He finished it in five hours, 15 minutes. Five days, 15 hours, and four minutes. He's really fast. <laughs> He was, he was 61 years old, a toothless potato farmer from Australia. Never seen a race, never raced, never trained. He knew so little about the race itself that when he won the prize money, he felt so bad for all the other competitors who tried as hard as him that he just split it up amongst everybody. He was a nice guy. He continued to race after that. I mentioned that his shuffle became known, known as the Cliff Young Shuffle. Sports physiologists came to determine that that shuffle was in fact the best way to go the furthest distance with the least amount of energy. The Cliff Young Shuffle. Three other people used Cliff Young as their lodestar, mimicked his shuffle, and won that race using his shuffle three other times. He continued to do long distance running after that. He tried to circumnavigate Australia, but he had to stop after 3,800 miles when the guy driving a car behind him passed out due to illness. <laughs> and he had to get in the car and drive him for medical attention. At the age of 79, he became the oldest person to ever finish an ultra marathon. He finished ninth, and he did that with cancer. Two years later, he succumbed to that cancer, dying at the age of 81. Now, Cliff Young had a quote that he would live by. He said, I like to finish what I start doing. I like to see it through to the end to the best of my ability. Cliff Young didn't have a privileged upbringing. He didn't have fancy equipment. He didn't have corporate sponsorships. But he had heart, and he had determination. Cliff Young changed the face of long distance running and inspired a generation of athletes to be better than they were, to believe in themselves, and to do everything they could at the best of their ability. All of this by a 61-year-old toothless potato farmer from Australia. You don't need permission to change the world. And so I say to all of you, what's our excuse? Thank you.